go ahead and get started. So we're with Liz Reitzig today of Nourishing Liberty, and I'm gonna turn the platform over to her so she can introduce herself much better than I'll be able to. Good morning, everyone, and thanks so much, Caroline. It's great to be here and do this work with Future Harvest. And what about this rain last night? Did everybody get a bit of a storm there? I know we did. Uh, like Caroline said, my name is Liz Reitzig and I wear a few different hats. I have about 10 to 15 years experience in marketing and public relations. So often I put that hat on with my other one, which is promoting direct farmer to consumer sales. And I do that through several channels including running my own buying club. So for those of you who are farming or who are direct marketing in any way, I'm right there with you. And I know a, what a lot of you have been going through the past few weeks. So I wanna, I wanna talk about that, but I also wanna be clear that uh, what we're talking about in this, this foundation building is relevant regardless of whether or not we're facing a pandemic and an upending of the food system as we know it. So this, the, the purpose of this workshop is really to build that foundation so that you have what you need during this time period and then beyond. So it is a two-part series. The first part today, you are gonna be crafting your unique vision statement. And you can think of this as the foundation that you're building for the rest of your marketing platform. And then next week, and I hope everybody will be back for next week, we're gonna look at the basics for communication to your current and potential customers. Where do you put that strategy, your energy and effort? You're already doing so much work, so do you have that, that extra to, to put into your marketing? But before we get started too much, I wanna find out who is actually, who's actually in the room with us? And, this Caroline, this is where the, the polls are going to come in handy. Do you have off farm income or are you relying solely on your farm for your income? And what are you producing? Are you a meat farmer? Are you dairy, produce only, flowers? What does that look like for you? And how were you doing before this crisis hit and how has this crisis affected you? Are you finding that you're uh, sales are skyrocketing or were your main clients restaurants and now you have no outlet. So give me a little feel for, for what, what's going on in your life right now. So quick question here, is anybody able to access the poll? It should be live. All right, please go ahead and fill it out if you can. Thank you so much. Awesome, all right, great. Thank you. I don't see the automatic responses coming in on my end, and this is a little new for me, so this is good to see. We'll give it a couple more seconds, maybe 30 more seconds. Thanks all. Yeah, I'm sure we're all getting used to the features of Zoom at this point, and maybe the, the learning curve is a little steeper for some of us, but I know I'm still on that learning curve. I'm not, not totally adept at it yet. But I do like that poll feature. And if you're, if you're finding that you don't, you have a different answer than what's presented in the poll, please put that in the chat and Caroline will sort through those answers and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a couple minutes. If there's anything else you wanna share about your farm or about your uh, direct marketing, please do go ahead and put that in the chat. Caroline, I saw it blink up on the screen for a second. It did, but I am seeing 0% responses, which I know is not the case. So let's see, anybody else, are we seeing 0% responses or is that what it's just showing to me? Cause I know- uh, This is Neve here, I see beyond 0% responses. Do you want me to read them out for you? Uh, Liz, can you see beyond zero? Um, I can see uh, it says host to share in poll result results, and it's got percentages in there. I don't know what beyond zero means. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, the percentages. Um, yeah, yep, I see that. Yeah. Uh, sure, uh, Neve, if you don't mind reading them out for us, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So, uh, in terms of what types of operations people are running or are interested in starting, 
the responses show 58% of the respondents are vegetable, interested in vegetables, 25% small fruit, 13% tree fruit, 30% cut flowers, 25% livestock, 3% specialty grains, 3% feed grain, and 43% um, identify as specialty crops, which could include mushrooms, medicinal herbs, or ginger, et cetera. 15% uh, are other and 10% are NA, so maybe service providers. Okay, great. And I see we have a lot of currently farming people and several who are direct marketing. Great. Uh, okay, thank you all. So we're gonna look at a few different parts of this. And as some of you have recently discovered, people are suddenly putting more emphasis on their food sourcing. And this is a chance for you to show what it is, what is that special need that you are filling. And that is what we're gonna look at in that, that 20 minutes that Caroline talked about. You're gonna have an opportunity to really put that on paper and give us something strong. And, and also, Caroline, do you wanna mention um, post break? Yes, absolutely. So we are going to be looking for a, um, a guinea pig, a volunteer post break, who's willing to share their worksheet and do a live workshop of it with Liz uh, during the webinar here. So I highly encourage anybody who's interested in that to volunteer because one of the best ways to get constructive feedback is really to work through it one on one and it's a fantastic service. Um, and you can just indicate your interest in doing that um, in the chat box or again by emailing directly to me it'll really help if you can have video live so if you are on the phone uh it'll be a little bit more complicated so please do consider volunteering if you have video great thank you caroline so the first step in all of this is finding your why why are you a farmer this is the most fundamental most important question to answer in any marketing platform at all this is your foundation it's what you're going to build your strategy around it's what you're going to build your um, all your other energy and effort around this is how you find the customers you want and how you're going to retain your ideal customer so right now for, for my business, because I'm, I'm doing a direct marketing food business where I source from local farms and offer delivery and distribution to city-based clients, right now I'm seeing a, a, a bump, a bump in the business. And that's great, but you know I don't want it to last three weeks and then all of that disappear. Because I'm also, as, as I grow, and you all know this too, if you're forced to grow rapidly for something, you've got to figure out infrastructure. You might have to buy another greenhouse or you might have to hire more uh, labor. And so once, once you have that infrastructure, you wanna sustain those sales. So use this opportunity right now to go ahead and get and retain those clients. You've got them because of this crisis, but what are you gonna do when this crisis is over and people aren't panic buying? Now's your chance to, to tell them what it is you wanna tell them so that they stay with you. And it's very important to figure out your why of your farming, because really when it comes down to our psychology and the way we're wired, we make choices and we buy based on what we believe. We wanna show that we're part of that larger belief structure. So you wanna find the customers who believe what you believe because they're buying into that belief. So you gotta give that to them. And this is actually one of the hardest things you're gonna do in this whole process is digging deep and finding why you're farming, or maybe, maybe you're not quite farming yet, but maybe you're getting into it. Why is it you wanna do that? Or whatever, whatever facet of this food system you're, you're jumping into, why is that? So one time I was, I was doing this exercise with the farmer and she was telling me, oh, well, because I, I'm farming because I want my grandkids to grow up on a farm. Okay, but you, can, you don't have to be farming and selling product in order for grandkids to, to have that experience. So I, I asked her to explore that a little bit more and really get clear about why she was choosing this, this way of life. I mean, it's hard work, right guys? It's super hard. And she was specifically a livestock farmer. And she kept going about how important it was for the animals to be outside and how important it was. And I said, okay, great. Well, you could have pets, 
she laughed about that. And, and finally she looks at me and she looks at me dead in the eye and she goes, I'm doing this because I believe every animal deserves to have a happy life. And I am here to provide that. And that was her why. And so once she got to that, she got so crystal clear of what she could share with her customers. And now she attracts those customers who also believe that these animals, even animals that are destined for dinner plates, still deserve to have a happy and humane life while they are walking around. And she was there to provide that. And she does an amazing job. So that is the kind of, that is the kind of why that you're looking for in all of this. So your why is also going to be bigger than what first comes to mind. So your farming, this is just a, an example I pulled out. This is not real to anybody that I'm aware of, but it, it probably is relevant to a lot of us here. I'm farming so my children can grow up on a farm. That's a great place to start because from there, we're going to get into your why. That's what you're doing, right? Versus, I believe that we can leave the world a better place for future generations through proper stewardship of the land we live on. And that is the why that makes you into that, what you're doing, which is farming so your children can grow up on a farm. So try to get into the, the differences and the nuances there of what you're doing versus why you're doing it. So as we do the, the next step, the, the workshop and the writing this down, you're going to get crystal clear on what, what it is that, that's driving you, whether you're, you're farming for profit or as a philanthropic venture, or if it's hobby farming, there's something there for you. And if you're currently looking for customers or clientele, this is where you need to start. So as an example, I'm going to share mine with you. As I mentioned, I run a buying club in addition to doing the, the, PR and marketing side of things. And this is, this is my why for my buying club. I started Grassfit on the Hill because I believe that we can nourish our communities, our world, and ourselves now and for future generations by choosing foods from regenerative farms where people and ecosystems are both important ingredients to the farming practices. So that's my why, that's, that's what drives me. Now don't worry, we're gonna get into this more in a little bit, but this can change, this can evolve just like you evolve. Don't be afraid of that evolution. Sometimes it's hard to go back and work on something, but it's also necessary. So whatever you start with today, consider that your starting point, not your ending point. You can look at it again in a month, you can look at it again in a year, and some of it might change, some of it's probably the core elements of it are going to be the same, but you might choose a, a, a specific word to change, or you might change a sentence, or you might put some other context around it. And that's all fine. This is a, a living, breathing document for you. To give you another example, there is a veteran in Maryland, and, and I do have permission to share this. He was very generous in that. And he is doing philanthropic farming to serve his community. And this was his why. He said, after my service, I found healing and purpose in working the land and nourishing my fellow brothers and sisters in arms. I believe that there are many more veterans out there like me and that through fields for valor, they can find peace, solace, and purpose through feeding other struggling families. So now it's your turn. As Caroline mentioned, you're gonna take 15 to 20 minutes to do the worksheet. Caroline, you've sent that over already? Uh, yes, I have, but hang on one second and I will send the link to everybody again. Okay. So uh, think- Sorry, I just sent the wrong thing. Um, we have a farmer who's volunteered to, <laughs> to be a volunteer. So sorry about that. I just sent that to everybody, but- um, Check the last thing, that last link there is the link to the document. So some of you, did you already send it before or is this the first time? So it was at the very, very beginning. It's the first link in the chat and I just sent it and it's the very last link in the chat now as well. Okay, great. So you're gonna think about why you're farming and what does it actually mean to you to be a farmer? 
Everybody here on this call, I'm sure, has other skills and other ways you can make money. Maybe some of you even have an off-farm job. So why are you choosing to farm and sell your products? Think about that really deeply and see what you can come up with. And we'll work on this worksheet and then we'll reconvene in about 20 minutes and that's where we'll go. I'll work with one or maybe two of you if we have time for that and we'll really hone down your vision statement. Yes, please, if anybody else is interested in volunteering, we have one volunteer, but because we might have time for more, please do go ahead and send along your information. Um, and I will do my best not to copy and share it. I apologize for that. Um, I will also be monitoring the chat box as folks are working through. Sorry, let me start my video for you all again. Um, and so if you do have any questions, let me know and I will go ahead and send them along to Liz. Um, the Google Doc is, should be shared so it's a view only, but you should be able to download it as a Word Doc or make a copy in Google Docs for you to work off of. Um, if can't, can you share it on the, uh, we're having a question, Liz, if we can share it on the screen. Um, I can switch it over to my screen if that would be helpful, um, or we can do yours. Yeah, go ahead and do yours. I'm, I'm in a different program right now. Okay, no problem. Hang on a second, folks. Um, let's see. All right, um, are folks able to see the worksheet now? Okay, uh, so it should be on the video. This is also a great time to get up and stretch or go get some tea. And, and I made it easy to print. So for those who like to actually use pen and paper like I do, I constantly brainstorm on paper and that is how I get some of my best results. So for those who like to do that, I made it really easy to print and work on it that way as well. Yeah, and for anyone who is having trouble accessing it, um, yep, go ahead and um, just uh, send us, you can send a private message to us with your email and we can go ahead and email you the link directly or a copy of it. Um, we don't want you to have editing access to this, but you should be able to go to file at the top if you want to make a copy for yourself. Go to file at the top left of the screen and go down. It should allow you to make, make a copy. It also should allow you to download and you can choose the format. Um, if you're having any trouble with that, again, just send a private message and I will email it to you. Thanks. I've already got one person. I will go ahead and get that to you now. And Caroline, there's also the second page. Uh, oh, there we go. Let's see if I can switch this so that it will. I'm not sure if I know how to switch the view in Google Docs here. Let's see. Well, here's the second page for now for anyone who needs it. Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead if every. If everybody registered, um, Neve, if you can hear me, um, could you go ahead and go into Eventbrite and um, uh, I will forward you an email with the worksheet downloaded or if you're able to just download the worksheet and send that to everybody in an email through sure. the Eventbrite link. Happy that would be great. It. Just because I'm sharing my screen, I don't want to mess that up for folks who are using it. Appreciate it. Thanks everybody for helping us figure out how to do all of this. I know Zoom is a little new for <laughs> for many of us and, and we're learning some of the kinks in the system. So this is helpful to make sure that we are better prepared next time. All right, so for anyone who didn't catch that little mini discussion, um, we are going to email the document to everybody who registered through Eventbrite. So just hang tight if you can't see the worksheet on my screen. Um, and if you're having trouble doing a message to the chat box or anything else, it is coming your way. And Caroline, here's where I really want to encourage people to use the tools that you need to get this, this brain work done. So if you want to turn off this screen or get out of the Zoom chat and get come, come back in, 
and put on some meditation music or whatever it takes for you to get your best concentration on this. Uh, let's set a time that we're going to circle back. He said about 20 minutes. It's been a couple. So do we want to say um, 1150? That's perfect. All right. 1150, so, that's 25 minutes. Do you want to oh, give sorry. It? Is that too long? I well, it's fine with me. That's fine. If people want that time, we can, we can do that. Let's say, um, let's say 1140. And uh, if folks are still working and need more time, just let me know. Uh, and we can adjust. All right, so we'll circle back at 1140. All right, it's 11.45, so break is over. Um, Liz, we have two folks who have volunteered. Um, Megan and James were the first. Okay. And so let me know when you're ready, and I, um, Megan and James, if you can unmute yourself. Uh, well, welcome back, everyone, and I hope that was a, a <laughs> fruitful exercise for you. And this, this exercise, I'm sure you'll continue this, after this workshop is over and you know maybe for days to come and this is where it really gets personal so i really want you to dig deep because the deeper you dig the more beneficial it's actually going to be for you and really don't be afraid of the emotions that it brings up for you this is where this is where it gets real embrace those emotions and this is where the rest of us connect with you on that deeply primal level before our rational brains can tell us to stop, we're already saying yes to you. We want to buy from you. So, so go ahead and let all of that come up and come out in those worksheets. And you'll get some results that surprise you. Great, thanks. So it looks like Megan and James are ready. Um, if you're ready for, for them, we can go ahead and share video. So I'll let you give the cues. Yes, let's go. Megan and James. 
All right, I see that you're unmuted. Are we're here. Great. Um, are you okay if I go ahead and share video? Yeah, I don't have my video on because um, I'm from a docking station. It doesn't allow my video to work. Okay. Sorry. Oh, is this Megan I'm speaking to? Correct. Hi, Megan. So as you were doing that worksheet, what came up for you? What did you learn in doing that exercise? Um, well, James is in and out. So when he was here, we were just talking about, this was originally his goal and his dreams. So we were just discussing with each other what we both had thought about it and what we're going. So, you know, basically starting with feeding ourselves. That's why we originally started. Okay. Was there anything about in, that, that came up in the exercise that you were expecting that, and then maybe anything that you weren't quite expecting? <laughs> um, one thing like when we were, when I was when we were doing the first part, the first thing is, you know, we talk about, again, feeding ourselves and just but what, you know, I, you know, I lived in Africa and this was very normal. The way we, the one we're doing now and creating, making our own food and then selling to other people, it just was natural. That was just something that you did. Yeah. Um, you don't do here. So I thought that was kind of like when we were thinking about it, it was like, oh, well, that was, you know, what, you know, creating your own meat, having a, you know, kitchen garden or a small garden is very normal, but not here in America. So I think that was what one thing that when we were looking at the uniqueness, which brought uniqueness to us, was something that this was just a lifestyle we've all, we've learned, we've lived in before. Um, yeah. So one thing that's great about this exercise is that usually when you you know, and I'm I'm already hearing it in what you're telling me, Meg, is that usually it's something that is much bigger than just us, right? So what I'm hearing from you is your you, your farming operation, you're doing it both to sustain yourself. And I'm also hearing to set an example for community so that others can see how normal it is. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's, I guess for me, for me, that's a little bit of part of it. And it's also about me reaching acceptance that I can, that I can feed other people. Mm. I think there's a period, a period in which you have to kind of reach acceptance that you're actually capable of feeding other people, not just yourself. And that, uh, you know, you're, you know, what you're producing is good enough, uh, you know, to ask for the price that you're asking for and to, you know, I, I kind of see us not really serving, um, the, the price of some of this food is pretty expensive, honestly. And the prices sometimes that we have to ask people to pay are like, okay, if, if you go to the supermarket, you're not going to have to, you're, you can't, you know, pay the same supermarket prices in order to cover your costs on, on a lot of the stuff that we're doing right now, because we're not doing it to scale. And we're not, you know, we're not, I don't know, maybe I'm just rambling. I mean, we're trying no, to I mean, no, there's, there's something really, res there's, there's definitely something resonating there. And that's, that's the, the, the sense of worthiness and... Yeah the sense of community of interdependence, right? Because right. You're, you're creating food for your community, but you need your community to recognize your inherent value in creating that food and pay yeah. those prices. So, yeah. and, and I, I heard you speaking about, Meg, you were speaking about how when you were in Africa, this was normal, everybody did this. So there's, there's definitely something there for you all on value and interdependence and creating a normalcy around feeding each other and living within community with each other. And when we look at when we look at who buys from us, people who buy from us are first generation or immigrants. So we are okay. people who mainly buy from us are Africans or uh, like Latinos who are first generation who grew up eating meat on their own land or or buying eggs or having eggs from their own chickens. So who we're selling to, actually, then there's, then there are the, yeah, yeah. But, but, I mean, but, but, but I guess you're right, I mean, it's a there. process, it's, it's like the way the food is, you know, your, your food isn't going through a packing plant, you know, because we're the ones who are packing it and we're the ones who yeah. are processing it. 
So it's like, there's no industrial touch on it. And, yeah. you know, so that's kind of some, you know, some people are kind of, well, it's a different, to the, the pigs go to the butcher for the U.S. Yeah, but, but like our chickens. But I guess, yeah, we're doing our own chickens and we're doing our eggs and we do our own turkeys. So, and people are comfortable with that. But the people who are comfortable with that, you know, are, um, like you said, kind of a different group. I mean, it's different, different necessarily groups. So. Yeah, so, so what else I'm hearing here is that what you're doing is you're providing a sense of home for the people who might feel displaced. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So uh, that's, I mean, that's where it's really like, that's where I feel it as you're talking. And I think if you go on that route and really look into, because Meg, you were talking so much about the, the feelings of being in Africa and the normalcy around it, and now you're serving immigrant communities. So there's, a, there's, there's something in there, something of your underlying belief of providing home and providing uh, hospitality maybe. Maybe it's about providing that connection to home or a shared living space, a community. So see if there are a few of those words you wanna play with. And, and also I'm hearing human dignity. I'm really hearing that from you. Your own dignity and being a provider of good food and the dignity of all the people purchasing from you because they've brought their culture and traditions and generations of it to the importance of, of creating a localized food system, right? Yeah. yeah. So play fun. around with that a little bit. See if you can find a direction where you feel like, where you feel really strongly that that speaks to your why of what you're doing. By the way, I don't know what you're farming. I, I, hear, I heard chickens in there, but I, I love it already. I love it because whatever it is, it makes me think of home. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's uh, the more stuff that we can do uh, completely by ourselves, I think that sense of home is uh, felt more, is uh, broader, but, uh, you know, we do, like I said, we're turkeys and chickens and, uh, you know, we, we've been trying some pigs. Uh, so it's just, lamb, sheep, uh, so it's just a variety of uh, things. So um, it's, it's a lot of experimentation on what works, right? Okay, and so that's what you're doing. That's the what, and that's the doing part. And the why part well, I, is in those feelings. It's in the creating the, the link to home for people or um, showing that, or normalizing uh, self-sufficiency or community interdependence, right? So see, go back to the worksheet, write down some of these words and see what, what sentence you can come up with that, that really gives the why, the what you're doing and the doing part of it, that's all clear. But if you can get into the why, is it the sense of, of creating that link to home? Is it creating normalcy within your community? Maybe it's a combination of both, but go ahead and give that to your audience. Um, Liz, I just want to well, in thank you. Um, and yeah. I have, I just have one question from the audience, which was if um, the folks are comfortable naming the African country, that would that would be wonderful. Um, I lived in um, Malawi and Zambia, but the community that we're um, mainly selling to, um, Kenya, Nigeria, uh, Sierra Leone. Great, and is this, you. are you based in, um, where are you based actually? We're in, we're in Frederick, um, we're, we're in Frederick between Thermont, just south of Thermont. Okay, great. The, the city and off the city. And is this a philanthropic farm or are you selling for profit? Uh, so originally we were just feeding ourselves and then people kept asking us if they could buy from us. So then we've had to up our production to sell to them. So we're at the beginning of figuring it all out. But yes, so we sell on prop, well, we sell goods on property. Okay, and great. That's where we're at. Well, good. I'm glad you're doing this worksheet now because this will help lay the foundation for how you build out the rest of your business. And and since I said business, I'll, I'll just put a pitch out there to everybody and say if you don't have a business plan yet, please do some kind of business plan, whether it's literally on the back of a napkin business plan or if you download a formal business plan 
uh, template, please get something done for your business plan, even if it's not, not for profit. Go ahead and just get something done for it because it will be complementary to the worksheet you're doing here, creating your vision. And it doesn't have to be perfect or elaborate, get something on paper. Okay, Caroline, do we have somebody else who wanted to share? We, do, we actually have uh, two more volunteers, depending on our time, but uh, the next person on my list is Karen. Um, so let's see, um, Karen, I think it's going to be simplest if you go ahead and unmute yourself and turn your video on and, and say hello so you'll pop up on screens. Um, let's see, I see that you have your video. Hi. Oh, hi. There we go. Hi. <laughs> I am uh, on the on audio on my phone, <laughs> so. Perfect. No, sometimes Thank that's how to do it. Hi, Karen. Did you get something hi. on the worksheet? Yes. Great. Um, so, I I kind of boiled it down to a statement. Well, should I share the process? Like I, it wherever you want to start would be great. Okay, I have a bunch of bunch under why okay. uh, to produce healthy food for Heathcote community, which is an intentional community where I live and others in our local community to contribute to food security, produce income, create a sustainable livelihood, demonstrate permaculture design, provide educational opportunities, demonstrations and hands on learning for interns and workshop participants, restore ecosystems, fulfill our intentional community's mission and that of School of Living, the community land trust that we are part of, to serve our community, provide healing for ourselves and others, build community, improve our health through exercise and sunshine, connect with nature to de decrease stress and anxiety, get off the community, express love, and be more self-sufficient. Great, that's <laughs> good brainstorming. It hard. <laughs> I couldn't fit it all in, that's, but that's I had. I wrote, we have a nonprofit educational regenerative community farm that demonstrates permaculture design principles, produces healthy food, contributes to local food security, restores and protects natural ecosystems, and educates others about regenerative farming, permaculture design, and sustainable living to help create a more peaceful, sustainable, and equitable world. Wow. Okay. That's a great start and you're going to use all of what you've written for your for your marketing purposes and your your goals and your mission. And now I want to work with you to boil it down a little bit. Okay. You wrote down a lot of doings, a lot. Okay. Okay. So those <laughs> doings are going to be your steps. But now you really got to get into that why you're doing it. And can you read me your last statement one more time? Sure. Um, we have a nonprofit educational regenerative community farm that demonstrates permaculture design principles, produces healthy food, contributes to local food security, restores and protects natural ecosystems, and educates others about regenerative farming, permaculture design, and sustainable living to help create a more peaceful, sustainable, and equitable world. Perfect. I see what you mean. That is a lot of doing. <laughs> your very last sentence, that is where your meat is right there. Your very last okay. sentence. Now reframe that. If you start that very last sentence with, I believe we can, how would you finish that sentence using the content from your last sentence? I believe we can. We can create a more peaceful, sustainable, and equitable world. Mm. Now take out uh, more and read it again. I believe we can create a peaceful, sustainable, and equitable world, and that regenerative agriculture is a key part of that. How about instead of and that, how about through regenerative agriculture? Through regenerative agriculture. So read that again now. That Just that last sentence, just that one bit. Okay. I believe we can create a peaceful, sustainable, and equitable world through regenerative agriculture. Um, hmm. That was beautiful. Now, okay. try that on as the top of the page 
and see if mm -hmm. all your do's fit under it. We do this. So you have that. I believe we can create dot, 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 you know, finish that out mm -hmm. in writing and then see mm -hmm. all of your do's should fit under that. We do this by creating a restorative farm, permaculture methods, healing and nutritional foods, mm -hmm. workshops mm -hmm. for the community, you know, all of those wonderful things, all of those oh do's God. that you had in there, they become the bullet okay. points under your why. Okay. Try that yeah. on. How does that feel when you say that? Okay. I believe we can create a peaceful, sustainable, and equitable world through regenerative agriculture. We do this by... Yeah. I mean, do you, do you feel, does that, uh, does that bring anything up for you when, you when you have that statement? I guess what it brings up for me is the passion to share it with others, to empower others, to grow their own food, and to provide for their own communities. It's beautiful. So maybe put something at the end about and empowering others to do the same. Something along those lines, okay. or maybe that goes under one of your, one of your dues, right? But that, that yeah. underlying belief, and you might need to finesse that a little bit to get it where mm -hmm. it stops you in your tracks. Like this, this, this is so powerful. It should really give you a second of pause. When you come up with the sentence that perfectly describes you, it will give you a moment where it takes your breath away. So play around with that mm -hmm. a little bit and find those okay. words that are perfect for you. But that is a beautiful start, Karen. And that is something that, I mean, who, who wouldn't buy into a peaceful, equitable, equitable just world? I mean, that's, that's a, a huge, huge belief. And it's something that we humans relate to on such a, such a primal level. So it's, an, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's a direct buy-in when you can give us that, that strong of a belief statement. Okay. Well, thanks. Great job. I think I have, I have trouble getting out of my head and into, my, into the heart area, but thank you so much. I get it. I mean, we all do. That's, that's why it's important <laughs> to take time on these things, right? Next, yeah. next week, we're going to focus more in the, the head space, but we have, to get this, uh, we have to get this foundation built so then we know where and how to apply all of these strategies that we're going to talk about next week. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for being willing to share. Caroline, was there one more volunteer who wanted to share? Uh, uh, Caroline got kicked off, but this is new oh. here. And, and okay. yes, um, so do we have time for one more group to share? Um, I, I have until 1230. That's, that's when um, mm -hmm. Caroline said it would end. So I definitely can, can do one more. Okay. And then we'll wrap things up and get ready for okay. next week. Oh, hi, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Power went down. Hope everybody else is still here. Um, but yeah, you go ahead. Uh, so I think that Caroline said on deck, we next have Stephanie and Lee, if they're um, ready to share. Yep. Hi guys, can you hear us all right? Everything good there? Hi, yes. All right, so basically I think there's, uh, what we wrote was as a fifth generation farmer, I understand the importance of utilizing sustainable growing practices. And I, I think it is a cool saying that the apple tree has 20 years life cycle. I'm able to see my father's mistakes and my, as my son will be able to see mine. This pushes me to continue to drive our operation towards sustainable growing and business practices. So my son has the opportunity to be a sixth generation Adams County PA fruit grower. Understanding that business and ag is ever changing, I felt it was extremely important to step away from processing production shortly after taking over the family operations. Having obtained Food Alliance certification shortly after taking on the farm, my wife and I have for the past nine years driven production and distribution of our farm operation towards sustainability to endure. Now kind of what that means is I think in long of the short, Stephanie and I have shot hundreds of ideas of ours down over the years to be sustainable in the chain of food and how we get it, where we're going to get it after we grow it and all that. And farmers markets wasn't working. CSAs is not working for me. I think the biggest thing is that we can't grow everything. It can't do it and you can't do it perfectly. That we needed some kind of a template that we can grow the apples and the peaches or somebody can grow the tomatoes and that would be more sustainable. 
all with a sustaining background of that we can each do what we need to do and make it work. Basically, that's where we're at. Kinda. Okay, okay, great. I love that background. Thank you for sharing what you're growing and the, the, the generational aspect of that. That's beautiful. Now, uh, a couple of questions. Um, do you or your wife have off farm work? I was a full-time car auctioneer through farming as supplemental income, very good supplemental income, and that all came to a halt. So we're back, we did farmer's markets years ago. So it came to a halt because of the current pandemic or a decision you made? It did, but we kind of came up in the middle of farming and needing more money along the way, and I just took the auctioneer route because I could make so much money. Mm -hmm. But we were still pushing our farm towards the way we wanted to go without all the work that it takes to do the kind of things that other people are doing and not be able to focus on our part of the farming, which is the fruit, you know, and yeah. to do farmer's markets, what do you got to have? You got to have a little bit of everything to make it through. You're not going to start with strawberries and asparagus. And it just was not working for me. I could make more money staying more of a wholesale end of it and auctioneering. Well, I could auctioneer and be a hobby farmer. But I don't, we needed to go a different route, basically, to make it work. Right. To be sustainable for us. So we yeah. were going to do this anyway, but this gave us a big push. <laughs> okay. To make our plan work. And we think we have a good Good. And I want, I, want, I want you to examine that a little bit, uh, because this is where I think you're going to find what it is that your customers are connecting going to connect with you around you have these other skills you have another way to make money maybe maybe right now we're all in a slightly different situation regarding off-farm jobs and you made this decision before the pandemic hit you were already going in that direction so okay so yes. tell me about that decision tell me about what brought that little bit of laughter up for you well, I don't think the auctioneer thing is going to go back. I don't. I think a lot of car auctioneers is going to be all online now. They pay us too much money. It's just, you know, crafted skill, and not many people can do what I do, sell cars that way. And now they got away from it. They don't have to pay us, and it, everybody falls in line. Why go back? I mean, the okay. other big car industry places did that. So you already. You you said a little bit ago you had already made that decision to go back to farming full time and as your primary income before the pandemic hit. So no, what? No, 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 no. My wife no. was getting out of school. My wife was going to do that part. I've always been farming. I mean, we're that, okay. that's my main thing. I can sell cars two days a week and make more than farming. Okay. <laughs> it's that big of a deal. But anyway, she was, and she's like, I want to go to farmers. And I always kept saying, no, no, we can't. There's no way. I can't do it. Need to get, no. And, but with a plan like hers where we can keep selling bulk, deliveries and not break it down with all the hands on and the different things you CSA deals or selling 15 things at a farmer's market that we really specialize in growing two of it, or, or things like that. Uh, so, uh, yeah. What I see, uh, um, so Hi. we've always had, with him being the fifth generation, always had the farm income, but needed to take jobs off the farm to support the farm yes. and diversify our income to support the farm. Right. Um, so we did that about four years, three, four years ago. We both stepped away from farmer's markets, um, both pursued Too much degrees. work. Couldn't keep up with the, that. So the farm's always been here. Everything else has just been our second job to keep the farm going, right. um, whether it be farmer's market, auctioneer, whatever side work. So what we've also done in that time frame, we focused on replanting our orchards um, and we also added a cold storage facility. Yeah, so with the auction we've money. we've been positioning ourselves over the last three, four years as well. So it's not like we just I mean, obviously stopped. we want everything to make money. The farm, you right. know, right. it's right. got to be pro profitable. We're working towards it. The biggest step that brought us here probably, like she just said, is we built a new cold storage facility. And we okay. spent all my auction money for, you know, and just step back. And now we're like, how do we use this thing now? You know what I mean? Like we have it. What we've been doing as a business in this three, four years time frame is expanding our direct sales outlet already through bulk distribution. Um, and it's, you know, we couldn't be in the farmer's market world. We met a lot of people through the farmer's okay, market. Okay, great. So we started good, good, good. Now, 
Well, let me ask you a question. And so, yeah. Why should people buy from you? There's other fruit growers, right? Peaches, apples. There's other people growing apples and peaches. Why should we buy from you? There's a lot of people out there. Why should we buy a from you? A lot of people. Where else are you going to buy from? Well, I guess. Well, there's not that many. Don't, don't flip this back to me. This is your worksheet. Why should we buy from you? Yeah. Well, I think personally, as I didn't grow up in a farming. Okay. So whenever I took over the operation and we wanted to be able to run the operation as efficiently as possible and us being younger growers, um, you know, sustainable agriculture. We didn't go to college for agriculture. So when we came upon Food Alliance, it was kind of that aha moment um, and understanding sustainable agriculture, sustainable techniques, sustainability as a whole um, was something we learned about early on when we took over the family farm. So we've structured the whole business for the next, last nine years under that umbrella of sustainability, which, you know, you could look at our farm. That right there, that right yeah. there is so pivotal. And that is, that is your why right there. Because you, yeah. the work you've done you've transitioned your farm to sustainable practices because what do you believe about transitioning to sustainable practices? I think there's two elements here. What do you believe in that? Yep. Transitioning to sustainable practices does what? Well, it makes us good stewards of the land first off. Um, okay. We to do. We live, you know, okay. Um, mental health, it helps your mental health. <laughs> <laughs> in okay. certain ways, sustainable things yep. usually make things work better. It helped him rein things in and gave him focus. And it ensures us that what we're bringing to our customers is a quality But product. she she was right there. Food Alliance was amazing. When we were doing farmer's markets, we didn't even really need that. But just having that, saying yep. that we did this, that sold yeah. us right away. And we, we I think a big thing is us being there. in front, too. So uh, whenever we were there and we were at yeah. the farmer's markets. I think the there's two elements here awesome. for you to focus on. One element is the stewardship yeah. of the land that you obviously believe very strongly in because this is hard work you're doing and you're investing all your off farm income back into creating sustainability on the farm. So that's one element. You believe that creating sustainable practices is better stewardship of the land or, or creates vital stewardship of the land. You can find the perfect words for you. And the second element there has to do with your community. You're inspiring others in your community to do the same, right? Mm -hmm. You're leading by example. I see, yeah. So see if you can fit those two elements in there. Those are, those are your own words back to you. See if you can take those two elements and fit it into an overall belief statement. We believe that as fruit farmers or as farmers or as sixth generation farms, however you want to describe yourself in one or two words. You're smart. You're smart. What's that? You're smart. So see you picked it all up and put it that. into one little sentence. That explains it. Yeah, yep. See if you can rework that into saying what it is you believe. As farmers, it's your responsibility. It's your, uh, it's your honor. It's your privilege to create stewardship of the land you're responsible for and inspire other farmers to switch to sustainable practices. See if you can get that into one clear, concise statement, okay? And good That's job, y'all. It's, it's hard work. It's really yeah. super hard work to transition over, but we need that more than ever right now. And it takes multiple generations, it really does. So. It really does, and that can go in your statement as well. That you're that you're doing this for future generations and as a, a as as a lighthouse as a beacon for others to see. Thank you. Good job. Thanks. Good job. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh. Liz, do we have time for one more person? Um. I do have a couple more points to go over when we're done, but if we can, do, if we can keep it short, yes, absolutely. I don't actually have any other volunteers, so why don't we go ahead and go through that, because I do have a couple things that I want to make sure I give to folks at the end, um, and I'm also going to go ahead and launch the post-event survey, um, so it is live and accessible for everybody. Um, you don't need to fill it out until right before you leave the chat, but I just want to make sure that everybody has access to it. This is going to be incredibly useful for us in 
figuring out upcoming programming. Um, and one quick note on that, uh, it doesn't, the way that the Zoom polls work, um, they don't allow us to actually ask any open-ended questions. So if you have any other feedback, please include it in the chat or email it directly to me or anybody else at Future Harvest. It's super help for, helpful for us moving forward. All right, thanks Liz. Yeah, Caroline, I'll add something um, on a different, <laughs> not related to that. Uh, I wanna say, I know that some farmers are currently experiencing an influx of orders and, and demand for their products. And then there's some whose markets have completely shifted to from restaurants to now, where do we sell our stuff? So I wanna say that um, I've been getting a lot of contacts from people looking for a product, both bulk and retail sales. So if you're in that second category where you suddenly had your uh, sales evaporate, please reach out, please contact me because um, I'm, I'm getting all kinds of inquiries and I'd love to make some connections there where possible. And Liz, we do have one more volunteer if we have time to just squeeze them in. Um, Adavinthi, Ad I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm gonna need you to introduce yourself because I don't wanna butcher your name. Um, I've got you unmuted now if you'd like to speak. Okay. Hi. Hello. Would you like to be on video? I can um, put you on video as well. No, I'm, I'm just comfortable being on audio. That's fine. Okay. Okay, my name is Ade Binkbe. I'm from Nigeria. Hi there, how are you? Hi, my name is Ade Binkbe. I'm, I'm from Nigeria. I'm, I'm here to help you with uh, questions on the worksheet. Did you get a chance to fill that out? Yes, I did that. Okay. I did that. Okay, so um, I am I'm, I'm a natural farmer, an organic farmer. Okay. I produce chickens, just um, a little chickens, around 300 monthly. So what I do is I, I produce them naturally. I don't use um, chemicals. Okay. I don't and use, and you, sell, I don't use, you sell the meat then? What did you say? Do you sell the chickens for meat? Yes, for meat. Okay. For meat. So what I have here on my worksheet is I realized that most of the foods in my community, they are contaminated in one way or the other, either during production or after production. And I believe that just like the olden days, we can also have access to healthy non-chemical foods. And I found my purpose in producing and advocating for that. And I also empower um, more farmers and other young people to produce, um, to adopt sustainable practices in producing their chickens as well. That's beautiful. That sounds like you've worked really hard on distilling this into what you believe and that your, your actions are proof of what you believe. Now, are you doing this, uh, are you farming only or do you have other sources of income? I farm only. Okay. And I also, I, and I also teach um, people to farm. I organize workshops and I, um, my, my farm serves also as a demonstration um, plot for them. So when, okay. when I teach them online, they can also come to the farm to see what they have been learning. That's wonderful. And you might, I, I, I love your statement already. You might, you might change a couple words and we can go back and forth if you want any additional help on it over email. Yes. But you might include something about um, being an inspiration to your community or uh, something about how, how you're, you're teaching other people to use these same methods or to, to produce clean foods. So you might see if you can fit a little something in there. It's very good already and it's complete uh, and it's concise. And I, I love it when something is short and concise because it's easier for people to say and it's easier for people to hear. So... Mm -hmm. You might leave it alone, or you might add one or two words about inspiring community. See what works for you and try, try both on and see what fits and try saying it to other people. And remember that this is something that you can change anytime or all the time. Okay. okay yeah, this, thank is, you. this is really good work. I'm very impressed. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for sharing. All right, great. Thank you. Okay, I've got just a couple more notes to go over. So I'm gonna go back to 
mm -hmm. my screen here. And as you look back over your worksheet or maybe print out another one and do a whole nother one, think about what, what surprised you and what you came up with. Was there anything that gave you pause or anything that made you think more deeply about what you're doing or why you're doing it? And maybe, maybe you write something down and you're like, hmm, where did this come from? I would really encourage you to explore all of those, all of those aspects of it. And remember too, that this is your beginning. Okay, you get to edit this, you get to refine this, you get to change it over time. It's a living document. So always go back and refine it. Go ahead and say it to a few people who you love and trust. <laughs> They'll be honest with you and use their reflection and their feedback to make whatever changes you want to make. And in particular, I love this quote because often when we sit down to write something and listen, as a writer, I am 100% guilty of this. I will put so much stuff on paper and then I will get a little bit attached to it. And when I send it off to one of my editors and I say, can you look at this? They'll take, they'll take stuff out and they'll, they'll tell me to change something. I'll think, no, not that. I don't want to change that because I get a little bit attached to it, but it is important. It is important to take that feedback. And, and this is a wonderful quote. It's not attributable to anybody in particular. It says, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. And so what that means is that we always start with the long version and it takes time and thinking to go back and, and tailor it down to what it is we really mean. Take the extra words out. So think about that as you move forward with this exercise and do it as many times as you want between now and next week. And next week, what we're gonna focus on is we're gonna focus on the, the, um, the strategies, the specifics of, well, where do you get listed? And what do you, what do, you do in addition to sell your product? How do you, do you post more to Facebook or do you send more emails? So we're, we're really gonna get into the minutia of the doings. But go ahead and get, get as much as you can done for your foundation. And I will look forward to seeing everyone again next week. Thank you so much for participating. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, everybody, so much. Um, so this is Caroline again, Future Harvest. Um, I'm putting a few resources in the chat box, and I just have a few close of the event business things to housekeeping things to run through. Um, Liz, thank you so, so much. This is incredible, as always. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to part two. I feel like I'm going to learn a lot more again. Great. Um, yeah, so if anybody has not uh, completed the post-event poll yet, if you can go ahead and start filling that out. We try to keep it as short and sweet as possible because we know surveys can be a pain to, you know, to always get surveyed, but it really is useful information for us. It helps us know what kinds of things you're looking for in the future and how to tweak our programming so we can make it as, you know, as adapted to your needs as possible. Um, so in the links that I just posted, there is a draft document on communicating your firm's COVID-19 practices. We hope to have a final version um, for available for next week, but we do want to make sure that anybody who is currently farming and thinking about what they want to share with customers um, has access to this. Uh, it's got a template that you can fill out with kind of prompts about what you might want to think about um, that's going on on your farm. So that's the first link there. Um, as always, feel free to reach out directly if you have questions. Um, and then I will also link to the Future Harvest uh, COVID-19 resources page, which has a ton of different things, including um, a fact sheet on safety protocols, some federal resources, some state resources, a recording of a past webinar on um, COVID-19 where we talk directly with farmers, um, and our Find a Farmer map. If you are currently farming and selling direct to consumers and you are not listed here, please do go ahead and sign up. We want to make sure that as many people as possible are here so customers can find you and contact you and get access to your products. Um, and finally, I uh, would be remiss if I didn't make a plug for donations. Uh, <laughs> um, so normally we charge a small fee for our field events um, and it goes to covering the costs of all the various different administrative things that, uh, you know, that go into pulling one of these together. Um, we have not been charging for our webinars, um, but in order to keep doing so, it would be really helpful if we had donations, no matter how small. It helps us do things like offer honorariums to presenters, 
uh, you know, pay for the subscription fees to these services, uh, pull together documents and all of that. And we know it's in a special hardship right now for a lot of folks, um, but small amounts really do make a difference. The donations don't just affect uh, webinars and, and that sort of programming. It's also related to um, helping facilitate us continuing to provide our beginning farmer training program, our conference, and all these other resources. Uh, let's see. Um, I want to make sure that I can see the chat box if anybody has any additional questions. Um, I, yep, I can, I can send um, all of the documents and links via email. That's no problem. Um, uh, we will not be sharing the slides, but all of the future harvest documents that we've referenced and the um, worksheet, I can make sure anybody who is on the webinar has access to that. Um, if somehow you ended up on the Zoom webinar, but you did not register through Eventbrite, you will need to uh, reach out to me directly so that I'll have your email. Um, and I know we had a request for Liam Stephanie's contact information. Um, if y'all are comfortable having that shared, please do go ahead and send that directly to, um, reach out to me directly so I know that. I do not share anybody's contact info without your explicit permission. Uh, let's see, I think, yep, go ahead. I'll hop on this and say I've been getting a lot of messages from people saying how amazing you are. So uh, well, thank, thank you. Again, that was <laughs> incredible. Good, good, good. And thanks to everybody who is willing to uh, put themselves out there and share. I know this is tough stuff. And thanks for, for stepping up and, and being brave. Yes, we really, really appreciate it. Um, and also, Caroline, thanks for facilitating this. Oh, yeah, no, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. I get to, to do on a rainy Monday, right? I got to do a one-on-one um, -on -one session with Liz and immediately was like, oh, my goodness, we have to share this with more people. So, <laughs> um, oh, great. Perfect. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Leah and Stephanie. All right, I will do that. All right. Um, well, I think that's it. So thank you, everybody, so much. Stay safe in the middle of these winds and crazy storms. And we hope to see you next week. All right. Bye. Take care.